Greetings everyone, this is Alt Lexington on the 24th of February 2020, a Monday morning at about midday-ish. And look what I've got here today. It's the Alliance Battle Cruiser, otherwise known as the Kitama class. It is a Starfleet Klingon Defense Force hybrid ship. So it looks kind of like a, a Vorcher, but with lots of Starfleet features added in, including a saucer. And I love this design, I think it's great. Captures both worlds. It is the recent free giveaway ship for completing the Omega Stabilization event. In other words, it's a gift from Q. Now this ship is meant for anti-proton beams, but I haven't used them on mine. On my USS Intransigence, Instead of going with anti-proton weapons, I decided to go with assimilated plasma beam arrays from the recent Borg lockbox. They were quite cheap on the exchange when the box was first came out, so I picked up a set and I love them. They look similar to... Um, the very first beam that the Borg shot at the Enterprise D in the episode Q Who from the Next Generation. They're like sort of like um, weaponized tractor beams. And because they're plasma, I decided to go with um, the Romulan Experimental Plasma Beam Array from the Romulan Reputation, along with its torpedo and its console to complete a three piece set that gives me extra plasma damage and it also gives me an experience. A special firing mode on my experimental beam which comes in the form of a clicky plasma hyperflux um, plasma weapons they I believe they leave behind um, electrical damage on the enemy ship and this hyperflux does it much more so. And the assimilated beams themselves it looks like they can restore my hull. And the torpedo creates three level 75 plasma torpedoes doing 5,000 kinetic damage each and a 437 plasma burn. I've gone with the colony deflector for the extra crits. The two pieces of the Nukara Reputation space set, the engines and the shields, because two pieces together will give me extra 5% energy weapon damage. And because I've got the colony deflector, I might as well put in the colony warp core, even though they're not a set. 
from Drenur Colony. For devices, Temporal Negotiator from, I believe that's in the Phoenix store, is it? Same as Red Matter Capacitor for the extra power. And Temporal Negotiator will reduce my cooldowns on my heals. I've got two Lobby Store consoles here, Bioneural for its crits and Tachyo Kinetic for both crits and turn rates. This probably gives you the most critical chance any console can give you in the entire game. As you can see on my build it's doing 2.4% extra critical chance. Raises my critical chance by 2.4%. And I've put on some armor and shielding. Armor with all damage resistance, and it also improves my shield capacity. I didn't want to die in this ship because I kept finding the shields kept going down very quickly. So I've put on a lot of um, free consoles from the Delta Research Lab with Drain X times 2 that improved my ships shield strength stop them from draining so much but it also allows my weapons to drain enemy shields I've gone with two pieces of the synergistic retrofitting set this one comes from the prototype dreadnought and this one comes from the NX class this is probably one of the best consoles in game as it boosts your damage resistance and your energy weapons at the same time passively. And this one boosts your projectile damage. And when they're both together you get the two piece bonus. 33% plasma damage so it's basically like having a vulnerability locator on your ship which I haven't gone with because I get bored of using the same tactical consoles all the time. I've also gone with um, the piezoelectric focuser from the Lucari reputation because it increases plasma damage by nearly 40% and flight turn rate which is important plus more shielding. This ship does need a fair bit of survivability built into it I've found. At least for me it does. And finally, this console, Plasma Wave, it comes from the Nakul Arcross Battle Cruiser, I believe. And although it's clicky that creates a Plasma Wave down here, it is fairly useless. It puts out a cone in front of your ship. And when fully charged, it will release a wave of plasma in your forward firing arc. It's pretty useless because enemy ships can easily evade it. But I haven't got it on for this clicky. I've got it on for its 20% extra plasma damage. As you can see, I've done the mastery and the, the trait is called automatic automated shield alignment which helps buff your shield and your ally's shield I believe oh no 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 I'm getting it mixed up it's um the more your shields go down the more bonus firepower you will get hang on a minute now am I getting this wrong zero to 15% bonus all the damage scales with how much shielding you're missing so as your shields go down you do get more damage and when you defeat a foe you're rewarded by getting that shielding back my stats holes not so bad I've got good shield regeneration and good strong shields as you can see I've raised my shield energy 
quite high. And good resistances thanks to this console and this console mostly. Critical chance 22.2% .2 because I'm not using vulnerability locators but that's still pretty good in of itself. And the critical severity is quite huge for, for my kind of builds. Um, I've got good speed and turn rate mostly because of um, pilot specialization. And the other important ones are the drain resist is massive because I found the shields kept going down all the time and even with all this sh stuff to prevent shield drain they still go down quite quickly for my skills same as every video I very rarely change these I've just gone tactical ultimate with a little bit in um, hull and speed and I went pilot primary and constable secondary because I don't normally use constable so I wanted to try it out pilot I went with that because increases your starship turn rate and I just wanted to try out Constable since I'm trying out new things. And what this does is it makes your primary target into your antagonist. So you get better armor penetration when you shoot at them. As for traits, I'm not actually using the ship's trait because I found you have to lose shielding in order to gain firepower and I'm not a fan of losing shielding I'd rather lo I'd rather have stronger shields I don't want to rely on my hull telling me when I'm about to die I'd rather rely on my shields I mean shields in this game they they've made it so because they know that in the TV show sh they're always saying, shields failing, shields failing. They've done the same in the game. But what the game doesn't seem to realise is, although on the TV show shields fail, they never actually go down <laughs> very often. They last just long enough, but not in this game. In this game, it's shields down, hole gone. So I've gone with um, beam, superior beam training, beam barrage, self-modulating fire, projectile training, kinetic position, nadion bypass, that's just for engineers I believe. Give engineers a little bit of a weapon boost. More hull more shields and something to help my miraculous repairs so that it will work more often starship traits emergency weapon cycle from i believe it's the arbiter battlecruiser pedal to the metal from the presidio battlecruiser um, supremacy from the bardwar astica Supercharged weapons from the, I believe it's an Odyssey flagship, not the legendary one, although you probably get it on the legendary one as well. And redirecting arrays from the, I believe it's the Tucker class miracle worker ship. For space reputation, more crits, more crit, more damage more penetration and good resistances this is like a piece of armor in of itself and just the usual space ones that you get be very limited with option with these for my stations
tactical team. These are Romulan operatives, these pre. Because I needed a bit of extra critical chance, which is what these give. Let's look at one's the traits of one of them, if I can find him. There he is. Traits. Romulan operatives have this trait. If you want to get ones with this trait, you have to go to your fleet's embassy into their tactical center and buy it from one of the co buy this duty officer this bridge officer from one of the consuls there and you have to buy the blue rare male tactical officer and then you can promote him up to very rare later but he will have this trait it's torpedo spread and fire at will chemicide Attack pattern beta. This comes from the winter event. It was a training manual. And the more you shoot at an enemy, the more you freeze them. It's kind of like a slow version of endothermic, an engineering tool. Pretty standard on engineers. Heal shield recharge weapon power and self directed energy modulation and for science shield heal whole heal and cleanse and i went with photonic officer because i heard every time you use it, it reduce the cooldowns on your other items but i don't know if it's working on this ship because this ship might already be a global cooldown Finally, we have the, where are we, duty officers, crit chance, crit severity, that's the crit chance one, hang on a minute, ah, I saw it said cannon there and I thought it was a cannon only officer, but it's not, it's only cannon for R&D. So that's critical chance, this is critical severity. This is for my directed energy modulation to make my weapons more power efficient. Two damage control engineers to help with um, cooldowns of emergency powder weapons. And photonics study scientist, which allows my photonic officer ability to cool down quicker so I can use it more often and theoretically with this duty officer cooling down this button to make it work more often that will allow me to hit this button more often which will cool down my other abilities quicker now I'm not going to go into any lengthy detail with this ship because everybody's got it and they're going to want to discover it for themselves I find it to be a pretty good ship I've been enjoying playing it especially with these Borg assimilated beams on it they're not upgraded so I haven't got much firepower 1200 for the Borg beams 1800 for the plasma Romulan plasma beam with its set of course and 5,000 kinetic damage. I've had to put my shields all the way up, put my weapons to the top, weapon power as high as it will go, and my shield power is the next highest power because I wanted to make sure that this thing could survive. Because it, it wasn't squishy, but it didn't. But I just got annoyed of hearing shields failing, shields failing all the time, or whatever the game says. As you can see on my keybind, all bound to the space bar, I'd put my weapons and my torpedoes. Now, I don't think I'll be using this clicky plasma wave because it's pretty easily avoidable by the targets. 
and also you can't do anything else with your ship while this is firing while this is charging and firing To be honest, it's probably one of the worst battle tools in the game. <laughs> it's, but it's more about novelty and theme than anything else, so I won't be using it much, if at all. I'll just be using its console for the 20% plasma boost. So, that's the USS Intransigence. It's like it's saying to the Borg, in its intransigent way this far no further <laughs> the line must be drawn here I've stolen your weapons by the way <laughs> I just hope we don't break our little ships anyway I'm gonna do a patrol and then a team match and leave it at that for this ship So, patrols, which one shall I do? I don't normally do um, blockade runner. I don't think I've done that on my videos yet, so I think I'll give that one a go. I just want to make sure we are playing on advanced difficulty. Yep. So yeah, the Zal system. I like this patrol because it's very pretty looking. And you get to see your ship all nicely lit properly so you see the patterns on its hull and things. Oh, the hot chick needs help. Let's go save her. Uh, we don't need to listen to all that. So a simple patrol to rescue ships. I'm sure everybody knows how to play these patrols. We're reading your beacon signal now. Uh, normally people go over to that one first. Your I'm going to that. Repairs before they can escape the blockade. Our Just to be different. To break through. Please cover their escape. I just had to turn my own Attention volume down. Ships. Both forces have followed greater vessels to this system. Fire at will. This is now an active combat zone. Any ship that do not leave will be targeted. Focus on the bar bar. Notice the bulk weapons, how they look like cones of energy rather than just straight beams. Very thin cones rather than beams. And I was so busy turning my volume down, trying to reach the button, that I wasn't really paying attention like I should. So that's why I needed to hit miraculous repairs. Come on, torpedoes. One, two. I like plasma torpedoes because they leave a kind of lightning strike on the enemy ship. Plasma arc. Oh, a little bit of lag there. Pick up my loot. Still haven't really used any proper buffing. Free plasma torpedoes. No problem. No triple at all. See what I mean about the shields and everything? This ship is very easily killable by the enemy. I wouldn't say it's squishy, but it isn't exactly Watch solid. Exit, area immediately. Exit the area. Boom. We can make it from here. Next ship. Go for the big target. Now hit dynamic and point defense. And spam that space bar. Bring torpedoes into alignment. Hit the booby officer. Hit 
Boom, boom, boom. More shields. No problem. So far, so good. You can have a lot of fun with this ship. It's not exactly a survivable ship, but it's not exactly squishy either. Warning. Artillery incoming. Exit area immediately. Warning. Engines are online. We're getting out of here. We're getting out of here. Engines online. We're getting out of here. I gotta get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Nice and slow. Because it's a big group there. Some of them are damaged already by the looks of things, so if you wait long enough, they might <laughs> kill themselves. Let's try Hyperflux. There it goes, I've just heard it. I think Hyperflux sounds like um, a high yield almost. Oh no, yeah, that was the um, bad one doing the high yield. Plasma. I love the lightning effect from the plasma torpedo. The electrical damage effect. And you can almost cover an entire enemy hull with your Borg simulated plasma beams. I'll repair you, don't worry. Warning! Artillery Warning! Get out of the circle! Bye. Now. <laughs> That's all of the stragglers. If you rejoin the fleet, we can make our escape. Now this is where you die. If you do die, might get lucky. Oh. With extra turn speed, because um, something's draining me. Hyperflux. Yep, Hyperflux does what other plasma torpedo. Sorry, what other plasma beams do, except more so and over time. Cold. Might be able to see him freezing a little as I shoot at him more and more. Those heavy plasma torpedoes, they do have a pretty good firing arc, I've noticed. So they tend to launch even though you're broadsiding. Why are you talking you like this? With some critical supplies. Thank you. You're talking as if you haven't had your cigarette this morning. <laughs> Once we re Hang on, don't rob me of my points, sneaky window. I usually take Terran marks. Save me having to play too many Terran missions to get Terran stuff. I think I'll try another patrol before I do a team match because that wasn't 
to show off this ship and build. So let's do our gala system, shall we? That's one everybody's familiar with. Where's wanted? There it is. We'll join the Benfans and be made a deputy. I do like this ship though. It really is a um, theme for the Alliance, theme looking build. They made a, they did a good job, I think. A lot of people have been ragging on this design, but I like it. I think it's great. Half Klingon, half Federation. I think they did it brilliantly. It's like a Federation Vorture. Or a Klingon Vorture with a Federation Saucer. And to get it for free is even better. See the torpedoes firing even though they're not technically in my forward firing arc. Although you, these torpedoes can be shot down by the enemy. And they almost fired out of my rear arc even though I don't have any torpedoes on the rear. And if a target is destroyed before they hit, they will switch to the next nearest target. I do think the lightning effect used to be more pronounced. Hyperflux, let's burn them to death and freeze them at the same time with served cold. So they're getting the cold burn. <laughs> I suppose they could call this a, a baby version of a fire and ice build. This is where you really see how these Borg weapons work. Look. Against small targets like that. It's sort of like very thin long cones of energy. I don't even have a torpedo cooldown officer on but they still fire quite regularly. I don't have law from Nimbus Wasteland as a duty officer. Not on this ship. But the torpedoes still fire quite regularly. They've just gone off to the other targets instead. A dynamic there. Just to finish him off. Bit of a waste, down. but why not? Get the big target and let Pirate World take care of everything else. Bit of coal, bit of that. Point defense bombardment. More hyperflux. He got a high yield off before the end. Sorry, um, the beam overload. Now, before I just flat kill these ones, I want to try this Nicole plasma wave just to see. So I'm going to put some distance and then come back around and see if I can out a plasma wave. Let's slow down a bit. There we go, from the Nicole Arcaros. You've probably seen this in one of the Nicole episodes. See, it barely does any damage at all, and 
most targets can easily avoid it. And the trouble is you can't do anything else while that's firing and it takes so long to fire. It, it looks good though, it's a nice novelty, just not very practical. So I do enjoy using it. I just don't use it if I want to quickly kill a bunch of enemies for my daily grind or something. I just use it for when I'm not grinding. So this isn't a very powerful build, but you've got to remember the weapons, they're not upgraded. And I will eventually plan to upgrade them because I love these beams. Just I haven't got round to it yet because I've had a lot of other things going on at the moment. Now why aren't they targeting my target? Unless they're slowly coming around. Yep, they are. They took the long route, probably because they're avoiding being shot down. Because those torpedoes can be shot down, I think. No wall. I don't know why I pressed it, I just wanted to see the shield effect. Comes from pilot specialisation. Let's try a rock and roll just for the hell of it. Gives you damage resistance, but didn't need it just then. But sometimes you do on this ship. I mean it feels a little weak and squishy when flying it because shield and hold go down a lot but I found that even though it feels like that it's not actually like that I wouldn't call it tanky but it's not as squishy as it feels when you fly it because I've survived a lot of things I didn't expect to survive and it's not because of those Delta research lab consoles. Recently, and multiple reports of danger to travelers. The Kazon, we have the suspect in... Okay. Now we do a team match. I'll just do a random hopefully it'll be a space one uh, make sure it's all in advanced yes 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 why is cure being featured right now I can understand to hell with honor to hell with honor isn't available in advanced yet so I was gonna do that but it's, you can't do it on advanced only on normal difficulty well we might do that I don't know but right now we'll do we'll just join a random and hope it's space might take a few moments to come up now did that work in that battle or did it get cut I couldn't I wasn't quite paying enough attention rock and roll ah yep here we go Less of my filler. <laughs> Come on, please be a space battle. 
something other than ISA, because I won't do well in that, because it's not a powerful upgraded build. Azor Nebula! I did this in this ship a minute ago for my endeavours. <laughs> but that was on normal difficulty. I, I bumped it down to normal difficulty for my daily endeavours to get it done quick. And now they're punishing me for that by putting me into advanced. <laughs> Still, I think this ship can handle it. I hope. It's when you say that is when you die. Alright, where shall I go? Well, they're all number ones, so I might as well go to the one behind me. So, this will be a bit harder than it was this morning. So I should not be cocky. <laughs> He's got being a tractor beam captain. But I'm playing weaponized tractor beams at him. Why do the trollings like the cold? I know the green do. Come on, torpedoes. There they are. Come on, hull. This is what I get for not using upgraded things. Whoa! Uh, that went down quick. Obviously I wasn't paying attention. Wow. I'm not sure this ship is meant for advanced in this ship and build the way I've got it. I went with more fun than firepower. It's what I tend to do these days. But still, I can brag that I soloed a ton this. <laughs> That's not much bragging rights there. A Talis Warbird is escaping. I don't worry about optionals on this match anyway. It's not often they are achievable. Somebody did a miracle worker tool from somewhere. This ship works, works best when you're with somebody. I think it's meant to. I mean, it's an alliance battle cruiser, so it works best as allied with a teammate, I suppose. That's a cross field there. Very nice. Great ship, that cross field. Uh, I have one myself from the. Um, is it the lock box or RD box? And I also have the legendary version. 
Ooh, ooh. I'm going after this and I'm going to die in the process, okay? <laughs> I just hope somebody comes with me, please. <laughs> I'm not going to survive this on my own. That's what I call in Del... Uh, uh, see if this makes any difference. Damn, if I miss I target it? That's the trouble, you hard to target it. Gotta throw everything at this tarantula. Wonder if it's worth going for that flank damage. For some reason I'm losing control of my mouse again. I always do, because I've got a crappy mouse. Come on, plasma topic, don't let me down. Uh, it's going to take a while to grind away at this guy. Grind down his shields. Although I am chinking him very slowly but surely. Can't those guys see that there's someone over here doing a number five battle? Maybe they watch my videos and want to see if I can solo it. <laughs> Well, we lost the first endeavor. Uh, sorry, the first optional. Wow, I'm having to throw everything at this guy. It's a good test, though. rock and roll inside the healing bubble. He's teleporting me, that's what it is. The tarantulas do have that ability. He teleports me into his forward arc in the hope that he can web me. Put a web around me. Ah, dynamics bad up, back up again. It's a sure kill now. This is fun! <laughs> I love a good one-on-one -on -one fight where you're not overpowered. I'm taking my loot before releasing that dread. I don't care about optional. I earned that loot. <laughs> now that is how the game should be. Good one-on-one -on -one fight where you don't feel overpowered and easily winning. You actually feeling challenged. I'm surprised none of the others came over though. Ah, somebody actually left the match when the optional failed probably. But who gives a crap about optional when you get a fight like that? You don't care about anything else when you get a good fight like that. I mean, I've got overpowered bills that could have slaughtered that tarantula. But it's more fun when you're not that kind of overpowered. And you're not being attacked by mob after mob after mob. Instead of just, just a good one-on-one -on -one fight. 
Oh, now you turn up. <laughs> Don't worry, dude. <laughs> Only joking. <laughs> Could have done with a tank back then. A falchion dreadnought is escaping. Oh, giddy with happiness that I actually had a good fight for a change instead of a one sided fight. So, yeah, this ship is proving to be pretty good. It feels like it should be squishy. And you do lose hurl and shields quite a lot. But it never actually gets to the point where it's going to die, even without the trait. The trait that's supposed to do exactly that. I think the ship does by itself what the trait says it does. What the trait does. There's no point doing anything else because, oh well, we can release ships. We've not got the optionals. Who cares about that? Even though we didn't complete the match properly, you still got to see this ship working the way I intended it to. So you're getting a good deal for free. <laughs> a really good deal. I don't get the feel from this ship that I got from the Ryzean Corvette or that. Well, it's about on par with that Fakiri ship. Fun as a novelty, but the Ryzean Corvette. That was more than just fun as a novelty, that was damn good. I've given up all um, hope to play the match properly. And I think everybody else has as well with only with a missing team member. Kind of time where you're just in it for the fun now rather than the grind. Well, we killed them. <laughs> we just didn't get to release the ship before the match ended. It looks like my inventory's full. Oh, really full. So I better clear that. And that'll do for this video I think. I think we've seen enough of this ship now to give you an idea of what it's like. Well, what it's like in my hands. I'm sure there are people out there who can do way better. And other people who might get a little bit of um, inspiration from seeing this. To help with their own build. That's what I'm hoping most of all. So the Alliance Battlecruiser. Um, also known as the Kitama class. Another quick look at the build. Do you know what? I can't remember which console came with this ship, if one did at all. Uh, da, 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 da. I wonder if anything jog memory. No, uh, nothing's jogging memory if my mouse will work. Hmm. 
Hmm. Could it have been a science console or a tactical console? I don't see anything unfamiliar there. Ah oh well, I forget. What's that one? Perhaps it's in my inventory somewhere. Hang on, I know how to find out what console comes with it. Aligned Anti-Proton Shielding Universal Console. Would that be in my inventory still? Because I haven't tried it yet. Hmm. Sounds like an engineering console. I don't think I would have upgraded it unless it came as upgrade. It's got to be here somewhere, surely. There it is. Aligned anti product. Let's just click that so it goes into my. Oh no, inventory full. Damn it. Oh god, I'm pressing the wrong buttons. My mouse is going haywire. There it is. 17.1% extra. Anti-proton damage, that's good. That's useful if you've got an anti-proton build. And 17.1 Starship Shield Capacity, that's good as well. I mean, I took off this console that increases my shielding. And put on this one that came with the ship. And it's put it almost back up to what it was with the armor console. In fact, I might just leave it now that I'm... I must have put that armor console on by accident or something, because knowing me, I would have left this console like as it is. And it's clicky, it gives plus 0 to 25% energy weapon firing haste. And shield capacity. That looks good, that console. I'm, I'm amazed I put the armor on instead of using that console. Ah, I know why I took the console off. Because I wasn't using an anti-proton build. I wanted to go plasma. But that is a good console for an anti-proton build. So I would advise people to use it. Although I'm sticking with my Borg beams on this ship for some reason, because I just got used to it and like it. But my overall opinion of this ship is very positive. As a free event ship, they've done a pretty damn good job with making a nice space barbie. Um, so, that's all I can really say. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed that. Got to see a proper evenly matched fight with a Folian ship. A Folian tarantula. Um, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, but more, most importantly, I'd like to see comments in the comments section of this video on YouTube.
because that will help the channel. Tell me about your Alliance Battlecruiser, what you built it and what you can do with it. Whether you like it or not, what do you like, what don't you like? Anyway, that's it for today. This is Lexington signing off. Live long and prosper. Bye.